Hey guys, what's going on? Today I've got for y'all the LEGO 10283. It's the NASA Space Shuttle Discovery. <laughs> This one is a really cool one for me because many years ago I actually did get to see it on its final flight and a few months later I actually got to visit it up close at the Air and Space Museum in Dulles. So even though it is cool to build something that has a real life significance, building something that I've actually seen in real life um, and in person is uh, an extra kind of cool factor for me. Starting off, I didn't quite know how I was going to frame this video because this is quite a massive beast of a build. Um, to put it in perspective, if any of you guys have the LEGO Technic cars, like the 1.8 scale, this one pretty much competes at least lengthwise with the 1.8 scale LEGO Technic Porsche GT3. So that can kind of give you a little bit of uh, perspective on how big this thing really is. I really wasn't expecting that. Also, my initial impressions with not seeing it with the booster rockets and the fuel cell, um, I was a little bit disappointed at first, but once I got to see the size that they recreated the orbiter to be, and the amount of features that they packed into this, I really can't complain after that. Um, I'm pretty satisfied at the end of it. Something cool about this set is you're really getting two separate builds in one, and that's the Hubble Space Telescope and the orbiter itself. You can almost consider these as two separate sets because they each come with their own display stand and also a display plaque. Um, the Hubble Space Telescope can also be displayed within the cargo bay of the orbiter and it can also be shown as I'm showing here um, in the process of deployment which is a really cool feature. You can still get this thing pretty available um, at LEGO Online or at the stores. It's $200 and it's got about 2300 pieces, 2354 to be exact. And uh, I think it's a pretty good value but I'll let you guys out there do that determination for yourself. I really don't want to go too much into a piece count per price because really what I look for at the end of the day is the substance of the build, was the build enjoyable, and at the end of the day, do you get a good finished build at the end of it? That's really more what's important to me. And looking at the Space Shuttle Discovery set, um, this one is definitely worth the money, especially if you're a space fan. Starting off with the first build, the Hubble Space Telescope, the first thing you'll notice is that it's coated in this really cool sparkly silver. It's more like a matte finish, but with a lot of sparkle in the silver. Looking up closely, you can tell that the pieces aren't quite on par in terms of the color application of the normal LEGO pieces, but um, looking from afar or looking from a distance or from where it's going to be displayed, it's really not an issue and it actually looks quite fantastic. It also gives it a bit of a weathered look to it anyway, which is pretty cool, so I can't really knock it. The NASA and ESA logo on the top are printed, so that's a nice touch. It also comes with an opening compartment door, which will reveal the Hubble Space Telescope lens inside. That's very cool. You also get on the sides deployable solar panels, and when I say deployable, really all you can do is pivot them out. Um, the solar panels in real life roll out when it's deployed from the Discovery. When you do have the Hubble Space Telescope displayed on its own, you get a spare set of arms showing the array full out and in their full glory. I can't complain that you do have to switch the arms out rather than the solar panel opening on its own, um, but due to the build constrictions that LEGO has, of course that's not going to be possible, so really, who can complain about that? As I mentioned before, you can display the Hubble Space Telescope on its own. It's got its own pretty sturdy display stand, as well as its own plaque. I do want to say though, for both plaques, they are stickers. It would have been cool if they were both printed, but again, they're really just display plaques. I really couldn't care less, to be honest, at the end of the day. Now, I think it's time to move on to this beast of a build, and that's the Space Shuttle Discovery, the Orbiter. Overall, again, I do want to relay its size. It's a pretty, pretty big beast of a build. It's pretty cool, and it does take up a lot of desk space or a lot of bookshelf space. Some of you may like it, some of you may not like it so much, but what you do get in the size is the packed features that you get in this thing. I think I'll go from front to back and explain what we have in all in here. First off, at the front, you do have a detachable crew compartment that you'll pull off to reveal the mid-deck below with one seat there for a crew member. 
you've got a couple printed pieces that represent control panels and you do get a really nice detail in the hatch that leads from the crew compartment into the cargo bay. The main deck comes with four seats for crew and you've got a really cool build at the front to represent the consoles and control panels and again these are all printed pieces. You do have a printed hatch at the top and these are actually two printed pieces as well as a printed cockpit glass canopy at the front. The rear section of the main deck also features two translucent pieces so that the crew can see from the crew compartment into the cargo bay while they're doing their work. That's a pretty cool added feature. Now moving into the kind of main meat and potatoes, the cargo bay. It's pretty peculiar in that it could be either really action and feature packed or it could be completely empty, but that choice is up to you. Starting from the front, you do get this hatch that does lead from the crew compartment into the bay as I mentioned before. You've got a pretty cool uh, communications antenna thing here at the front. I'm gonna be messing up with all the terminology here, so please forgive me from here on out. The cargo bay does have three cameras affixed to the cargo bay itself and another camera affixed to the really cool Canada arm that they've actually included with the set. The arm does extend from its kept position and you can also configure it to show the Hubble Space Telescope in deployment. Another really nice added touch. One thing that you'll definitely notice in the build is that the cargo bay is lined with plenty of reflective stickers. Um, those of you are, that are going to try and get it right and perfect, I kind of challenge you to do it through the whole thing, but I think I got tired about maybe five pieces in and I kind of just plopped the rest on. That being said, I wasn't too unhappy with the result. You really can't tell the misalignments um, that bad unless you do a really bad job at it. Now the rear of the cargo bay has a really cool printed American flag. And of course the biggest feature with the cargo bay with this particular build is it can house the Hubble Space Telescope or you can have it completely empty. It would be cool to see maybe in the future someone do a mock of maybe the Space Lab or other satellites that have been launched from the Space Shuttle. That would be a really cool touch. The bay doors open and close pretty solidly. Um, they pretty much stay in place whatever position you put them in. I do notice that when you do close them, you kind of have to get them right for them to really fully seal. Sometimes you do get a little bit of a gap, but nothing too bad. Now moving on to the rear of the shuttle, this is really where you get the bulk of the features and I'm kind of glad I saved the best for last. Starting with the rudder, you can pivot it from left to right, and you can also split it to act as a spoiler to slow the shuttle down when it's descending and when it's going to stop. Moving down from that, you've got really good detail in the main engines and the reaction control engines. They were kind of fun builds to put together, and at the end, I think they look fantastic. One really cool feature is that when you rotate the top main engine from left to right, that actually activates the elevon so that you can roll the shuttle from left to right. And right below the main engines, you've got a working body flap that you can pivot up and down to change the pitch of the shuttle. And a lot of you guys already know that the coolest feature of the body flap is when you push it forward, you extend all of the gears. Also speaking of the gears, I do want to note that when you have this on the ground with the gears deployed like it just landed, they actually went into the detail to give it a front rake, just like the real life version. I do love that the front sits a little bit lower than the back, and it's just really astounding to me that they went into that much detail to replicate the stance of the shuttle when it's on the ground. Like the Hubble Space Telescope, you can display the shuttle with its own stand. It's a really sturdy build on its own. And again, the shuttle does have its own display plaque, which is a sticker piece. Talking about stickers, the set does have a blend of printed and sticker pieces. To me, I'm more of a fan of the printed pieces, but I know a lot of people will have their own reasons for why stickers could be better. Either way, the end product looks beautiful to me anyway, so I really can't complain too much about that. Now that we've covered a lot of the main features of the set, I do want to talk about the detail that went into this thing. For me, just like the features, this set is packed with detail. Building each nozzle for the reaction control system, it's beautiful to really behold when you look at it. The heat shield tiles are nicely replicated and detailed, and I do like that they go the extra distance to color the ones on the wing in gray like you see on the real shuttle. The interior space with the crew compartment is nicely built and it's a really fun process as well. And even for something as seemingly blank as the cargo bay, they did really manage to do a lot to pack as much detail as they can into this, such as the hatch leading into the crew compartment, the various communications antennas and dishes, the Canada arm, and the exterior cameras looking all around the cargo bay. And then of course the working features like the elevons and the rudder, and the detail in the main engines, again, the detail on this is pretty top-notch to me. 
Going into the fun factor of this set, I really do think it has it. For me, it's in the various ways that you can choose to display the shuttle. You can display it without all of the stands, you can have it on the ground with the gears down. You can choose to display the orbiter and the Hubble Space Telescope separately with their own stands. You can also display the Hubble Space Telescope within the cargo bay. And of course you can display it like I have it here with it about to be deployed from the Discovery. For me that's where that extra benefit of the fun factor comes in. It's not really a static model to display for life. You can go back in the future and change it up a bit so that it doesn't get boring. And I really value models like this where you can do that. So closing thoughts on this set. Is it worth the $200? Well it really comes down to what you value in a set and you already knew you weren't going to hear a simple yes or no on this question. If you're a fan of space exploration, you're really going to want to look into this set. Comparing it to the Lunar Lander and the Saturn V, I think that this one is probably going to pack the most features, but this one is also the most considerably priced out of those two. At least in LEGO form, I can't see how it could get any better than this. You do pay a hefty price for it, but I do want to stress you get that two-in-one build in the Hubble Space Telescope and the Orbiter. For me though, is it my favorite set at least of 2021? I will be honest and say it's not my favorite set of 2021 because for me that goes to the Porsche 911. And really I don't say that to knock this model at all. I'm just more of a huge nut for cars and I do like space exploration but more so aviation in general. But for me anything car is always going to win especially if it's a good one. Again I'll reiterate if you are a fan of space travel and if you do like the shuttle in general you are really going to want this set. It's beautifully executed, well done, I've got to tip my hat to the designer. This one is a really great one, it was a fun build and really I can't say that much more about it. So to end it off with the Space Shuttle Discovery, I've definitely got to recommend it. If you could save up your pennies, it's definitely worth the price. It's beautiful, it's gigantic for those of you that like it, and it's got so many features that you're going to enjoy. So as always, I've got to leave you guys with the angles and the views. I definitely appreciate you guys stopping by and checking out the LEGO 10283 NASA Space Shuttle Discovery. It's been a blast again and I'm looking forward to see you guys again. Take care, stay safe, and have fun y'all. See you later. I've got to say thank you, thank you, and thank you for watching. If you guys did like the video, please like it, and if you would, please subscribe. I've got a lot more coming in the future, and I hope to see you guys again. Thank you again. Bye.